55 degree bevel swept back bowl gouge. Hi, I'm Kent and welcome to Turn a Wood Bowl. And today we're going to talk about the 55 degree bevel swept back bowl gouge. It took me quite a few videos to be able to spit that out in one take. So I'm quite proud of that. <laughs> anyway, my brothers give me grief about it all the time. Every time they watch my video and they hear me say 55 degree bevel swept back bowl gouge, they always laugh. So we're going to talk about the 55 degree bevel swept back bowl gouge today in great detail. Why? Well, because it's my favorite tool. So what is a 55 degree bevel swept back bowl gouge, you ask? Well, guess what? It's hiding in plain sight. The definition is right in the name of this bowl gouge. Essentially, the front nose of this bowl gouge is, as you guessed, 55 degrees. Now, we really don't measure the side angles too much or too easily. It's not easy to get the protractor in there. You basically take the top leg of the protractor and set it right into the inside of the flute, and then you can measure that front bevel angle. That's the 55 degree part of it. Now, as far as the wings themselves, they can be swept back at different lengths. And that's essentially created by dropping the handle more while you're shaping or sharpening at the sharpening station. Now, keep in mind, you can create this profile with any bowl gouge. I have an online tool sharpening course, and in that course, I also go into great detail about shaping tools. And I show you how to shape all of the possible tools you would need for turning a wooden bowl, including the 55 degree bevel swept back bowl gouge. So you might want to check that out. And in that course, I show you exactly how to create this wing profile and how we create this. And again, this can be done with any bowl gouge. I like my wings long and you'll see in just a second why I like that. Many people look at that and they're like, wow, those wings are, wings are very long. How long are those? Well, it's difficult to measure because each bull gouge is a different diameter, therefore the wings are different lengths, even though they may have the same proportion. So what I do instead of trying to measure it, I actually use a proportion. So I take the diameter of the shaft and I usually keep my wings about two times that or just a little less than two times the diameter of the shaft. It's that simple. So my, this is my 5 8 inch bull gouge. And this, I'm in the United States, so 5 8 means the outside of this is 5 8 the flute is one half inch on our 5 8 inch bull gouge. Yeah, I know that's confusing. And in other places, they would call this a half inch bull gouge because they measure the flute, but we call it a 5 8 inch bull gouge. So don't let that confuse you, but we're using proportions here. So basically the diameter of the shaft times two is roughly the length of which I make the wings on this. Now, I like them long, because they are part of the tool and part of the use that is going to be really important. I'll explain in a second. Which brings me to the next question. Why do you want this 55 degree swept back bowl gouge? And usually it's the added onto that question is, and why are the wings that long? Oh, well, I'm so glad you asked. The reason is, is this tool can create every cut and scrape that I need to completely turn a bowl. I don't need to go grab any other tools. As we mentioned before, this is a multitasker, not a unitasker. So first off, we have this great profile and it's a 55 degrees, which gives me a really good ability to get way down in the deep side, deep end of the inside of a bowl as well. But for doing a push cut, obviously, I'm basically just using the tips, the front cutting edges. If you watch your tool when you're doing a push cut, there's a really small area of the, the cutting edge is engaged. You're not really engaging a large area. The other thing that's really nice is these wings are tucked back and they're out of the way when you're doing a tight inside curve. If you've ever turned with an English grind, an English grind is a bull, bull gouge. It's basically shaped like a letter U on the front and it has these sharp pointed sides for the wings. If you get those engaged, you can get a really nasty catch. This profile has the wings 
tucked back, they're out of the way. So it's great for making inside cuts. Now this can also do pull cuts. And I have to be honest, I don't do a lot of pull cuts. A pull cut is where you're basically on the bevel, but instead of doing a pushing action, you're doing a pulling action. It's very easy when you're doing a pull cut to come off the bevel and turn the bull gouge over just a little bit. And then it's easy to get a catch and flip the bull gouge around. So I'm not a real big fan of doing a pull cut. A lot of times I'll do a scrape and that's the third cut that you can do with this tool that's fantastic. Now a scraping cut, the bull gouge is usually on a horizontal plane and you're using, you have the flute facing the cutting surface, the, the bull, and this is usually on the outside. It can be done on the inside rim. You don't want to go way far in the inside of the bull because you can get a catch, but on the outside of the bull, you have the bottom wing acting like a scraper. It's no different than any other scraper. And this is great for removing material quickly and removing a small amounts of material. You wouldn't be using this to rough out a large bull blank, but if you have an area that's rough and you're getting some tool marks, it's a great way to scrape those away and have a nice, relatively smooth surface. Then you can engage the fourth technique with this tool, which is absolutely amazing. And this is kind of the secret weapon of this tool. And the reason we have these nice long wings. So we go with a scraping cut at horizontal, well, guess what? If we drop the tool handle to a 45 degree angle and we still use that bottom wing only, now we're doing a shear scrape. Now a scrape, when we're doing a scrape with this or with a traditional carbide scraper, we're impacting the wood at almost a 90 degree angle. And that's pretty aggressive. And a lot, you will have ripped out material, no matter how smooth or how sharp that scraper is, you're gonna have ripped out material just by the nature of the physics. With the shear scrape, what happens is the handle is dropped and we have a 45 degree angle here. So now the tool is acting more like a razor and shaving. So it doesn't have that aggressive 90 degree impact. Instead, it lightly shaves the surface. This is perfect for finishing, especially the exterior of the bowl. This is a technique you do not want to use on the inside of the bowl because it's easy to get a catch. But on the outside of the bowl, when you're making that nice smooth curve, this is a great technique just to take away small areas of material where you wouldn't want to do a push cut. If you did another push cut, you're going to probably go too deep and then you're going to take more material away. The shear scrape is perfect for this. Uh, many people see turners make this great big long cut from the bottom of the bowl all the way up to the rim and they want to mimic that. You don't have to do that. You can actually make a really nice, beautiful bowl with an elegant curve in it and do it in sections. Start at the bottom, work your way out, maybe pause, reposition yourself, do the next section and do the next section. However, when you do that, you're inevitably going to see where you paused between there. There might be a high spot. There might be a little bit of a low spot. Well, guess what? The shear scrape is the perfect technique to use to blend those areas together so they look great and you don't see that transition area anymore. So the shear scrape is by far one of the best things about using the 55 degree bevel swept back bowl gouge. And now you know the secrets of this tool and why it is so powerful and why I love it so much. I highly recommend, especially if you're just starting out, don't buy a whole bunch of tools. You do not have to purchase a large set of wood turning tools to turn wood bowls. The only thing you really need is a single bowl gouge. I would recommend a half inch bowl gouge if you're going to be doing medium to small bowls, a half inch bowl gouge, and you put this profile on it, the 55 degree bevel swept back bowl gouge profile and you'll be shocked of how much you can achieve with just this one tool. You don't have to be grabbing another tool and trying this tool and going back and forth. This tool will do pretty much everything. The only time I need another tool when I'm turning a bowl is when I'm doing the inside angle of the tenon. And this is where I use my spindle detail gouge. The spindle detail gouge is great for getting in and making that negative angle back inside the tenon. But other than that, everything can be accomplished with one bowl gouge. Now, if you start doing larger bowls, you may want to also acquire a larger bowl gouge that can be used for roughing the outside of the blank itself. Usually roughing is done best with larger tools. The half inch bowl gouge is great for doing refined cuts and it's perfect for doing 
all of a medium-sized bowl. Okay, so I like this bowl gouge a lot, and that's really because I started using this early on when I was learning to turn wood bowls. As humans, we have a habit of being really comfortable with what we use when we first start out. I have experimented with many other bowl gouges, and I've discovered that this 55 degree bevel swept back bowl gouge is really good. The traditional fingernail grind or like a 45 degree grind, they are good and they work fine. And if you're using those, there's nothing wrong with that. Go ahead and keep using them. I highly recommend trying this profile out. Use it over a couple different bowls and see what you think. Now, if you're using a carbide scraper, there's something that's really important if you're going to experiment and try using this bowl gouge. The thing you have to know is you need to take this bowl gouge and essentially rotate the flute in the direction of your cut. And you're only gonna cut in one direction with the bull gouge pointing in that direction. So if you're gonna go left, you take the flute, you angle it about 45 degrees to the left, and you make the cut. Unlike the carbide scraper, which has a flat surface that can be used to scrape basically at almost a 90 degree impact point, the carbide scraper, you can kind of just scrub it around and scrape things and clean out material. That's nice, but you can't do that with a bull gouge. If you're making a cut from left to right and you decide that you want to back up to kind of do that scrubbing technique that you see with the carbide scraper, the bull gouge is going to kick around and you're going to get a nasty catch and you're going to tear out part of your bowl. You need to be aware of that. It's not something to be intimidated by. You just need to know that this tool does not work like a carbide scraper. And you're going to have to learn a few different techniques in order to use this. So keep that in mind. Now you might be thinking, well, why would I even want to do that if I've got a carbide scraper and a carbide scraper, especially a round carbide scraper for the inside of a bowl, I can just scrub it around and clean out the material. Keep in mind that when you're cleaning out the material in the inside of a bowl with a carbide scraper, your tool, even the tools that have the downward angle to them, they're basically making about a 90 degree impact to that wood with no discrimination on the wood grain itself. So that means ingrain fibers that are coming across that tool are just getting torn out. They're not being cut. They're not truly being cut. Now, some of the carbide scrapers are very sharp and they make relatively clean surface after they've been used. However, with a sharp bull gouge, you will not match the finished surface of a bull gouge with a carbide scraper. The bull gouge will make a much smoother cut on the surface. Many times there's very little sanding that's required when you have made a really nice cut with the 55 degree bevel swept back bull gouge. Now, the 55 degree angle also plays a big factor in the way that we present this tool. When this tool is riding the bevel, if you're making a face cut, the handle is out in such a way that you could reach pretty deep inside a bowl. Now, if you're at a 45 degree angle, it's not as easy to do that. And if you have a deeper bowl, all of a sudden the handle or the shaft of the tool will actually hit the rim of the bowl. And then you have to switch to a different bowl gouge to get down into the bottom of the, the bowl. That's where a micro bevel bowl gouge with a really steep angle on it works well down deep into a bowl gouge. I use that tool as well for really deep bowls, but you would be surprised how many deep bowls the 55 degree bevel swept back bowl gouge will easily clear out and make a really nice surface all the way down to the bottom. I like this profile so much that I use it on basically the three main tools that I use. The only thing different about these are their size. I have a half inch 55 degree bevel swept back. I've got a 5 8 inch and I have a 3 quarter inch. Now you might notice that the wings of the 3 quarter inch aren't as long as my other ones. Well, I rarely use this big bowl gouge for doing the shear scraping. That's what we really need the wings for is the shear scraping. This is pretty much used 
as a very sturdy tool to plow out and rough out the exterior or the interior of a bowl. So I use this as more of a plow to remove material quickly. And that's why the wings are not as steep on this particular one. I could lengthen the wings on this just by dropping the handle a little bit more while I'm sharpening it at the sharpening station. Now keep in mind, I'm only using the front corners of this nose to rough out material both on the exterior and the interior of the bowl. So I really don't need really big long wings here, but I do like the fact that the wings are hanging low. They don't get in my way when I'm, especially when I'm doing inside cuts. Some other names for this tool are the Ellsworth grind, the Irish grind, and the long grind. I tend to like to call it what it is. It's a 55 degree bevel swept back bowl gouge. Now, when I did some investigating when I was first starting out, I asked around and I asked people, what's the bevel angle at the front of that bowl gouge? And you'd be surprised how many professional turners did not know what their bevel angle was. And once I did check and actually get the angles, you'd be surprised the range of angles there were from, from 40 some degrees to almost 60 degrees. And there was, didn't seem to be much consistency. So, I determined based on a lot of turning that 55 degrees works well for me. I feel like the tool engages nicely. I have a good reach down inside the bowl. It just works really well. And I have these nice long wings for doing my shear scraping and scraping cuts. So I stuck with that and I've just used the, the actual bevel angle in the name because it helps me remember it as well. I'm not going to I'm not gonna be happy if this is 58 degrees or 42 degrees. I'm going to be checking this with my protractor periodically and making sure that it's 55 degrees. Now I've got my sharpening system set up so that this pretty much is always getting sharpened at 55 degrees, but it's always a good idea to have a protractor on, on hand and just take a, take a look and make sure it's not drifting one way or another. And I'll tell you a little secret. One of the ways I discovered this tool was the fact that I was actually turning with a different tool with a different profile that wasn't anywhere near 55 degrees and I wasn't checking it with the protractor. And each time I went to a sharpening station, I kept changing the angle a little bit and a little bit and a little bit. And it was a happy accident then because that's kind of the way I stumbled onto the 55 degree bevel. And I just love the way it engaged the wood and the way it cut it. And it was at that point that I realized I need to be paying attention to what I'm doing at the sharpening station because if you don't check with the protractor, you can easily drift away from the angle that's working well for you. Now, if you want to know more about the bevel angle of bowl gouges, I've got a great video on that and it goes into much more detail than we're going to go into here. For this video, I want to share with you why I like the 55 degree bevel swept back bowl gouge and why it's so important for me and keep in mind that's my personal preference if you have a gouge that you like that's working for you more power to you and stick with it if you'd like give this one a try but if you don't you don't have to there's no one way to do this and obviously there are many other bowl gouge profiles that'll work great when you're turning bowls so now you know a little bit more why i like the 55 degree bevel swept back bowl gouge so much and why i always mention it in my videos it's because it's a great tool it has multiple purposes and multiple roles in the process of turning a bowl and i love the fact that i can have one bowl gouge to do pretty much everything I need throughout the entire turning process. I don't have to depend on a whole bunch of different tools and go finding them and making sure they're all sharp. I basically can turn a bowl with one tool and that is fantastic. I love that. And that's what I love about this particular profile. So if you've tried this profile before or if you're using it now or if you're considering shaping one of your bowl gouges to try out the 55 degree bevel swept back bowl gouge profile, leave me a comment below and let me know what you think of it. If you've liked this video, do me a huge favor and click that like button and make sure you're subscribing to this channel as well. I appreciate all of your support with your likes and the fact that you're subscribing. Thank you. Be sure to check out my website, turnawoodbowl.com, where I have tons of information there about turning wood bulls. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. And until next time, happy turning.